Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, just plain welcome. This is Steve and uh, I'll be your host today. <laughs> Uh, if you missed the first part of this, I will put a link up uh, in the upper right corner on uh, how I did the landscape part of this. But today is mostly going to be uh, me doing the the horses and the, the main focal point here. So let's just dive in. Yeah, you know, I really should say it's not just the horses. It's doing the horses and tying everything in and finishing up the painting. So everything that I didn't get done in the first video that I posted a number of months back, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do in this video here. So uh, one of the things I, I didn't mention in the first one was that in order to do this painting, I had done a smaller study uh, just to kind of get the feel. And uh, so I'll put that up on the screen. It was a pretty quick painting, but for a painting uh, that I'm doing of this size, I thought it was important to kind of get my head in the game and, and get familiar with painting the landscape a little. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the uh, the focal point horse here, this Palomino, the way I'd paint anything. And that's uh, you, uh, you paint the shadows and you paint what's in the light and you try and keep them separate and you keep them as simple as possible. Uh, keep the paint rather thin and then as you go along, you're gonna go in and you're going to add your details into these parts. But for now, you wanna get your general values in as closely as you can, but knowing that you can adjust them as you go along. And of course, knowing that we're going to be adding thicker paint later on as we go, but first things first. One thing I do wanna call your attention to is as I'm painting this, you'll notice that I'm not painting it in as though I have to stay within the lines. I want uh, the edges to break out of where I have it indicated that the horse uh, ends and the background begins. You need, you need to do that. You need to pay attention to your edges. Otherwise, if you paint the background in and then you paint in the, the horse in the front, you really risk having it look like it was cut out. And that's one of the, one of the big no-nos uh, of doing paintings. So try and keep your edges a little bit softer you know, as you're painting in, knowing that it's easier and better to go in later and tighten up the edges where you want it to be tack sharp focus. Uh, and then you don't have to go in and try and fix uh, your edges everywhere else. You want it to look like it's been painted at the same time and not in stages or put in later. You know, I get some really great questions sent to me, either in the comments or through emails. And one of the things that people ask quite often is, you know, how do you learn your equine anatomy? How do you learn to draw or paint the horse? And uh, I'm going to do a video on this, uh, on the books that I use. And I also have a, uh, what they call an écorché that was sent to me from uh, 3D Publishing and they do some wonderful figures. I'll go ahead and throw it up on the screen here and uh, just give you a little bit of a preview. But I always try and keep this with me close by on the easel as I'm painting so I can take a look at what the muscle structure is like. Always remember to take lots of breaks, keeps your eye fresh and keeps Boo the Wonder Cat happy. And of course, when she's happy, everything goes better. So once I have the the horse basically laid in, roughed in. I also will go around to the landscape that surrounds him and work them in together because it's, you know, it's, it's got to work together or, uh, you know, it's going to look funny. And so I, it, it helps to break things up as well, but I always try and work the values and the colors up together rather than trying to finish any one part of the painting. I will kind of jump around. And if you do that, then you know that a certain area is going to work uh, rather than say, well, I'll, I'll wait to fix the landscape or this hill that the horse is on. I'll, I'll wait to finish that until later. But one of the things that I'm trying to do as this uh, hill goes from the light into the shadow, you notice that I'm painting the color a little more saturated and a little darker when you have that transition because that's kind of what happens as, as uh, something turns away 
from the light into the darkness, you're going to get a, a, a thin area that really intensifies in color. And if you get that in now, your light effect will read like what it's supposed to. Well, now that we've got the main horse laid in, let's transition over to this herd of horses. Uh, and I'll back up just a little so we can uh, show you them getting laid in from the very beginning. As usual, I'll put in the shadow side first. I can usually read that a little bit better as far as what the value needs to be. It's okay if the, if the color temperature's off a little bit, but you really need to make sure that you try and get your value as spot on as you can. Now once I get the, uh, the shadow side in, I'll take a soft synthetic brush and very lightly brush across and remove any of that extra paint so that it lays in there like a flat area that it should. It uh, gets rid of the extra paint and makes it easier to, uh, to continue to work. And so once I even that out, I uh, continue to put in the shadow areas and, and like before, then I'll put in the light areas. Uh, I won't make you sit through all of that because uh, I would be bored and I know you would be. So here it is once we've uh, got him roughed in. Uh, he's not perfect by any means, but um, you know, and one of the things that really surprised me on doing this, I, I've never painted a herd of horses off in the distance like this before, but I did know that it was going to require less detail than an, I normally would put in, but uh, it took a long time. The, this whole herd of horses, I was, I was kind of shocked at how long it took. Um, so I will just kind of continue on here. The, the thing that was so challenging about this was to get it so that there was enough detail that they looked like they were in the right place in the landscape. It didn't look like they were so far away or so close that, you know, there would be microscopic detail. I didn't, didn't want that. But the other thing that was challenging about this was that they were all kicking up dust. So I would paint it in roughly and then I would uh, add a, a bit of a, d a dust around them and a little bit over, over the top and then uh, I'd paint uh, more in, more of the horses in, and they would all have to mesh together. So it took a little bit of back and forth. I mean, I never felt like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do this. Uh, that was never the issue. It was just like, this is taking a long time. <laughs> Can't we move this along? I gotta admit, I feel kind of silly. You know what I mean? Oh, but you can't hurry it sometimes, you know, and you learn as you go, you know, you learn what you could have done more efficiently. So uh, don't let that uh, frustrate you. you. Just keep keep working at it. Put on some good music. Uh, I like personally, I like putting on some Tchaikovsky whenever I'm I'm droning through something like this. <laughs> Seriously, one of my favorite pieces of classical music in the world is Tchaikovsky's uh, Violin Concerto in D Major. If you've never listened to it and or you're not really that into classical music, uh, give it a try. You may find that you really like it. And uh, it just it blows me away that somebody is able to play the violin good enough to be able to play that piece. So it's either Tchaikovsky or some good old rock music, you know, ACDC, what have you. Just depends on what the mood is. Let me know down in the comments. Do you like listening to music whenever you paint? Uh, if you do, what do you like listening to? I know a lot of people will tell me that the, they can't concentrate, uh, have music on and paint at the same time. But, um, you know, I've always been able to do both. I like listening to, uh, to audio books as well, but... Uh, you know, music is almost always on in the studio here. Now, painting a white horse in the distance, in the dust, has its own challenges. Uh, and uh, putting in the shadow side first doesn't ever really give you the feeling uh, of uh, what it's going to look like. So I always try and get, uh, if, if I have a something white or light like this, I try and get the, uh, the light side in as quickly as possible so that I can see if the shadow side is reading 
because you, you want to make sure that your shadows look like there's still light in them, as opposed to, you know, having them so dark uh, that it doesn't, uh, doesn't really read correctly. So one of the things that uh, you need to guard against is painting your shadows uh, too dark. Now you never want the shadow side to be as light as the light side. Uh, I imagine you know that. Uh, and um, as long as you keep it so that it's secondary always to the light side, uh, you can go in and put in, like I've got here, some reflected light going in there. And I'll work that kind of back and forth uh, right from the beginning. Uh, I could wait until later, but um, you know, the paint is thin enough that uh, it just goes in really nicely. And so I try and get that done as quickly as I can. I mean, not as quickly. I put it in as early as possible so that it reads, uh, reads right away. <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> I'm, I need more coffee. I'm saying stupid stuff. Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> hey. To the river, to the river we go, leave our worries on the shore and drift away. On the river, on the river we know, sometimes the perfect words are never said. I spilled my coffee, I don't feel like talking, my worries just keep growing by the day. I need a moment where the green and blue appear to spin a rock and watch the ricochet to the river. To the river we go. Leave our worries on the shore and drift away On the river On the river we know Sometimes the perfect words are left unsaid You could change your mind When you're intertwined with the water and the waves the doctor gave And with that old fishing pole I still catch them by the bucket full The kids are helping on the grill and sneak a taste To the river To the river we go Leave our worries on the shore and drift away On the river Sometimes the perfect words are never said You could change your mind When you're intertwined with the water and the waves place before you end your days and if you see me out there wave hello well as we go on our merry way here you may have noticed as I uh, was painting along to the music here there was a there was a faint drawing off to the left hand side just behind behind a uh, far left hand horse and I decided that that horse that I had drawn in there, it was kind of, it just wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. So I decided to go ahead and edit him out. Uh, 
you know, what you leave out is just as important as what you decide to put in. So uh, I decided that he needed to go, and uh, he's off in other pastures somewhere. But uh, you see, as I'm painting this, I'm, I'm adding in some dust here. And uh, I haven't added the dust in the far horses, you know, this is kind of the second wave of horses, but uh, I'm just dry brushing these on, doing a very, very thin coat. Really, it's, you know, it's a thin veil, just like dust would be. And uh, as I go, if I want to, I can, uh, I can glaze over it to make it a little more brown or a little more yellow ochre -y. You're never stuck with just whatever you have put down, but obviously you try and get it as close as you can, you know, on the first try. Just leave it alone, see if, uh, if you like it, if it works for you. And uh, if it does, you know, just go on. If it doesn't, just know that you can go ahead and change that later. But it's important that you try and work everything up uh, together so that you know whether things are working or not. <laughs> like I said, as I was working on this, these horses took a long time. So I, I broke it up by uh, going and working on areas that I knew that needed to have a little more, a uh, little more definition, a little more um, finishing done on them. And so uh, I would, uh, I'd move around, and when I saw a place that I felt like I wanted it, it to sit back a little farther, like I'm working on here, I would uh, gray things down. You know, some of that green, I'd gray it down, and. Uh, allow it to uh, to work in with what was there already. Uh, and when I'm doing this kind of work, I am uh, mixing my paint in because that background is all dry. I'm mixing a little bit of liquid into each one of my, uh, uh, you know, the paint mixtures. And so it will go on looking as though it were wet at the time. That's something that I discovered as I was going along, and it took me a, a while before I figured it out, it really does help to help uh, finish off a, a painting to be able to go into some areas that are dry and to work them as though they were wet. Now, I could coat the entire painting with, uh, you know, a, a nice coat of liquid, but um, that's just, it's overkill because I, I don't need to work on the entire painting. I just need to work on bits and pieces. So as you can see, I'm working over the whole thing. I'll, I'll hop from here and there. I'll step back a lot. I step back an awful lot when I'm doing this. And, uh, and I see um, what needs to be adjusted, what I think needs to be added. You know, I'll, I'll put some browns that are going off into the distance, but you gray those down. And at this point, it's like I always say, you know, I, I put down my sledgehammer and I start working with my scalpel and, uh, you know, do those transition areas that I missed or, or maybe I feel like need to be reworked uh, or worked on a little bit more. Uh, this hillside here, it took me uh, quite a while in order to get it so that I felt like I was happy with where the bushes were and how the hillside was coming down. But uh, I, and people ask me, uh, how do you know when you're finished? Uh, basically, I tell them, <laughs> I know I'm finished with a, paint, with a painting when I don't see anything else that I need to fix. <laughs> and so basically, that's when uh, I'll put the brush down. But uh, as I get closer and closer to finish, I do less and less work and I step back and I'll stand and look. Uh, and I, I, a lot of times I'll stand back and I'll hold up a mirror and uh, look at the reflection and see if there's something that really bothers me or, or needs to be addressed. But eventually I'll step back and I'll look and I'll look and there comes this moment Yep, it's the big W moment. We all have them. At least we hope we do. Now, maybe not on every painting, but every once in a while. And so this was my big W moment. Ooh. 
And so, if you've made it all the way to the end with me, you deserve a gold star. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, consider subscribing. But at the very least, you could help the channel by liking. I've also got lots more interesting and informative vids coming your way. And as always, I'll see you down the road.